Ooh, what's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 75 of the Stand Up Guys podcast. I'm your host, the incomparable Zach Jones, joined as always by the castor to my Pollux, Lester Jones. Yeah, I don't think that's going anywhere for anybody. <laughs> oh, some, some, some mythology nerd out there is like, mm, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> you don't even know. No, I have, I have no fucking idea. But uh, according to the internet, they're brothers. All right. <laughs> now the sad part is, um, uh, I, I suppose eagle-eyed, you know, watchers and and listeners of the show will notice that uh, AJ is not here today. And uh, well, there's parts in here. There's no easy way to say it, but. <laughs> Um, now, AJ, I want to specify he is, he is okay, um, but he was involved in, you know, a pretty horrifying ass-eating accident. Mm. Um, and now, he is able to talk now. Now, when um, you say ass-eating. Well, he's, here's the thing. So, um, he was in critical condition. He's now in stable condition. Uh, he is able to talk kind of... I. And, and you only knew the broad strokes of this situation. I, I actually just talked to him. I got some of the finer details. Okay, cool so you I'm know. close to personal. Yeah. Um, like he was with that ass. No, it, I mean, it was over the phone. And I'll be honest, I had a hard time uh, uh, hearing him because his uh, injuries are pretty extensive. His jaw is actually um, wired shut. So it was very, you know, mumbly and hard to understand him. Um, he's also got stage four pink eye. Whew. Um, uh, and and uh, I guess his nose is also a wreck. His sinuses. I mean, that you must can only been imagine a, a good ass. So here's what happened. Here's what happened. So he went on uh, his his dating app, uh, it, uh, Gender, which is Indian Tinder, where uh, you know for Indian people to meet. Why G? No, it's a J. You know, Jay. gender is an Indian name, oh, so this, okay. this is why it's clever. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> God damn. Um, These gender people are smart. <laughs> um, so he goes on there, and he, he he's going on this first date with this girl. And, you know, she didn't expect, you know, anything sexual to happen as a first date. But, you know, AJ, man, he's a closer. Mm. And uh, so they get to fool it. smoothie. Yeah, he is, he is. So they get to fooling around, you know, and they're making out and, and whatnot. And, you know, he, he starts, he starts, you know, I guess, you, you know, going, going down right. south, you know, uh, you know, he does a, you know, a couple, couple kisses on the neck, you know, maybe a hot breath on the nape of the neck. He tells mm. <laughs> why he gave me these type of details. Right. I, I mean, I didn't need to know like this you much. You barely understand it, but like he needed to. Yeah. This. I mean, I wish he, I wish he would have saved his energy, but he, he really let me know. So. He goes down a little more, you know, you know, suckles a little bit on the, you know, the left nipple, right nipple, you know. He says he doesn't make a meal out of him, you know, just just wants to, them to know that he's there, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he starts kissing down the happy trail. <laughs> Wait, this chick has a happy trail? Uh, I mean, uh, that's what he tells me. Huh. And I never heard of this move before, but apparently he, he, he does a little tongue in the uh, belly button, which, I don't know, that sounds pretty gross to me, but, it, you know, it works for him. It works hey, for him. It, if it's clean, I mean, it was after he was done. He said, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> "Anyway, he, he he starts, you know, going down below the border, you know, start and he starts going to town." And here's the thing: we all know that he's famous for eating ass, right? But not everybody does. And I guess what he likes to do with women is he doesn't like to tell them beforehand. He just like kind of he likes the surprise, you know. He likes to spring it on uh. them. And um, that is the best way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then they'll be like, "Oh, I'm with a full service gentleman," you know, right. you know, and, and and he likes that surprise. It's hard to get that these days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now here's the problem. Now we flash back to her day. So this is what he did. This was unbeknownst to him. Is oh, wow. earlier that day, There's you know, backstory here. Yeah. Okay. See, what happened was it was lunchtime and she was starving, I guess, just famished. And she went to Long John Silver's. <laughs> oh. And um, it just happened to be Fish Taco Friday, where they sell 
three dozen fish tacos for three dollars. <laughs> And here's the thing. It's this, not this should be a mashup is like one of those uh Taco Bell fish <laughs> <laughs> Long John Silvers together. Now here's the thing is it's it's three dozen fish tacos for three dollars, but it's it's not like a dollar a dozen. You have the minimum order is three dollars. So she she got the three dozen, right? Three dozen. And here's the other thing is you know how like most uh most fast food restaurants, they're owned ultimately by like Coke or Pepsi. And that's, you know, how, whatever ma- machine they got there, that's usually who, who like owns it or whatever, right? Okay. Well, Long John Silver's is weird. They're actually owned by RC Cola. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Mr. Pib or something. Yeah. Well, they got all sorts of weird shit. So uh, they got RC, Shasta, Fresca, and what was really AJ's downfall. They got Sunny Delight on tap, no. and uh, they got this thing where like uh, it's a it's you know a bottomless uh, you know two dollars and you get a bottomless drink. Mm. So what she does, I mean, like I said, she's she's famous. So what she does is she eats the three dozen fish tacos, and then um, uh, you know <laughs> this is you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> she eats the three dozen fish tacos and washes it down with two gallons of Sunny Delight. Mm. I mean, I got you. And this is just, you know, ultimately a recipe for disaster. So now we cut back to AJ. He springs the ass eating on her. And apparently, according to him, it's just, you know, it's a fire hose. It's, you know what it is? It's, it's, uh, you know, that scene towards the end of Temple of Doom where they just barely make it out of that, that tunnel <laughs> in the water. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, it was like that, but with dude. Water's coming out the edges. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Things are falling off. And, and I mean, he's, he's going to be recuperating for a while, it sounds like. I mean, he, he's got the broken jaw, the, the, the stage four pink eye, the, the, the sinus infections. The, you can only imagine. Um, he says, though, he is looking forward to the second date. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of build-up. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> that <horse shit. laughs> um, So anyway, we will be reviewing the Matrix Resurrections <laughs> for you fine folks. Um, um, before we get there, though, man, uh, what else have you been watching and playing this week? I've still been hitting Far Cry 6. A lot. Now tell me where you're at. Give me a little give me a little mini review of Far Cry six. What what are you liking? What are you not liking? I mean it's all attacking bases. I, I could use some more bases actually. I just love attacking bases, my favorite, but the map's like it's gigantic. And that's not enough bases? Well there's bases and there's blowing shit up and there's side missions and there's hunting and fishing and I don't know, everything. Are there are there aspects of it that are frustrating you that you don't like? I've I've come to a couple frustrations where, like, I went into a fight and like you really needed to have like the right weapons equipped, or you were gonna like fuck the pooch, um, just different things like that, and it was just kind of some of those are a little bit frustrating. I'm sure you've heard me swearing is why you're asking this question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had. So I was just like <laughs> Didn't you have a problem where like uh your your squirrel suit or parachute wasn't deploying uh, correctly or something? Yeah, I've I've jumped off multiple things and died on the rocks. What? When it seems like I shouldn't have died. I don't know. Something's a little awkward. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know. Um so I also did some gaming this week. Uh, first of all, I finished, finally finished up Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, good game. Uh, like I've said here on before, I think, I think the gameplay is just fine, uh, but the story is really good. And, and like all the characterizations and everything I, I really like. I think if you like the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, I can't imagine you wouldn't like this game. Um, and then I started playing Spider-Man Miles Morales. I had played, you know, the original Spider-Man uh, PlayStation game. Came out in, I believe, 2018 and, and really liked it. This is basically, you know, basically, I mean, more of the same, but with Miles instead of Peter. Um, he's He's got a few powers that Peter doesn't, so you get a little more, a little different variation. Are they black-related? Yeah. 
<laughs> It'd be hilarious. He's got the power to bust a rhyme. <laughs> no, he's got uh, a venom blast and invisibility. <laughs> it's like Grand Theft Auto. He beats up prostitutes and shit. <laughs> Spider-Man, bitch. Jeez. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he's just alienating all of our black listeners. Um, no, but I will... It, it is in the for me anyway. Maybe it's just my my deteriorating gamer skills, but it, it is frustrating sometimes. And I had this with the, the original too. Is like like swinging through the city and stuff is fun, but like sometimes there'll be like a challenge where you got to follow a very like specified path right and it's very i have, i find it very difficult to do like I'll, I'll get caught up on the corners of buildings and different horseshit and and like like they got a few of these that they're like timed and like if you get such and such a time you get you know this and if you get such and such and i just always like squeak by with the lowest time because i'm just <laughs> i'm just shit at them man i don't know i'm just really bad well, that's another thing on far cry there's like these short missions where it's like, oh, there's a supply drop. You need to race and get there before the enemy military gets there. And so you race your ass off. You get there like, you know, 30 seconds left. You're like, yes. And then there's like, they're already there and they just shoot the fuck out of you. You're like, why in the fuck did I have to make it on time if I have to fight these assholes when I get there anyway? <laughs> I will say like, um, you know, with work and everything, like I, I don't play games like nearly as much as I'd like to these days. But like, basically like the greater part of Saturday I just spent playing and like, it is fun every once in a while just to be able to get like sucked into a game. I, I haven't done that in a while. Yeah. I, my kids were out of town this weekend and, and that's all I did is played a game and I haven't done that. In, I don't even know when. Yeah. I definitely put in more gaming time this weekend than I have in a long time. Uh, what about just watching shit? Um, uh, besides the matrix, like did anything of note? I've I've watched a couple of Arcane you're talking about, and then like I fell asleep and, and missed like two or three of my sleeps. So I got to figure out where I where I was kind of. <laughs> do you do that shit a lot? Well, now we have a, a couch, <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's much more easy to do. That. I mean, I I guess I just hate falling asleep in the daytime like so much, or that that I just don't do it. Like if I f feel myself nodding off, I will do something to to prevent doing it. Number one, because I wear contacts and I, they'll just like oh, get yeah. crusted That's over. Nasty. I've done it. But number two, I don't know why anytime I fall asleep in the daytime, I end up having a panic attack and I, I don't know why <laughs> it, my, it just fucks with my brain or something. Panic. I don't, I don't think I've ever had a panic. attack. It's like, you ever have those I've like, had like adrenaline, you ever have those nightmares where you're like late for something? Like it always like ends up. I guess I have had nightmares where I had. Like, it always ends up giving me one of those like where like, like I, I I wake up and it's the daytime so I'm like fuck I slept too long or you know something like that and I just end up <laughs> giving me like a terrible like anxiety I don't uh, I'm like a crazy person or something. Um, I did watch a few things. Um, so I I decided to watch the Jungle Cruise on on Disney uh, Plus. No, I wasn't in for it. What? Uh, the reason I tried it is, I mean, I do have a, like, a, 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 I do like, like, pulp adventure movies. Like, mm. I love The Rocketeer. I really love the first um, Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And this movie did, in a way, seem like they were trying to capitalize. Like, th this yeah, movie has that. similarities to Pirates of the Caribbean, but it's not as good. Right. Like, it feels like a, a, a lesser version of that. Um like it's not terrible. It's t it's totally watchable, but it, it's yeah. It's just it's not as good as Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, it, it's better than the last couple really terrible Pirates of the <laughs> Caribbean movies, but it pales in comparison to like the first Pirates movie. Um, I finished uh, the second season of of Nora from Queens on HBO Max. Right, I watched a few of those, and I I'm like kind of like. It's all right. I don't know if I'm in love. Overall, with it. I like the first season better, I think. But like as you get into like well, you might have a different experience, but I there's definitely I got some laughs out of it for sure. Um and then just last night I started I only watched one episode. I started season 2 of uh, Star Girl, another superhero show <laughs> that I you mean, would have I haven't even heard of that. You one. would have no interest. In. Yeah. <laughs> um 
All right. Do you want to talk about anything else before we get into this review of The Matrix Resurrections? I haven't really prepped anything. I don't even know how much of this movie I'm going to remember, but uh, we'll try. We'll try. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I'm not going to remember everything in detail, but but we'll try our best. Um, so anybody who hasn't like listened to or watched our movie reviews before, generally we try to just kind of give our our you know spoiler free general impressions, and then we'll do a more spoiler filled uh, discussion, you know, with a breakdown of the plot. <clears throat> so yeah, just um, well here. Let me read the uh, the official synopsis first. Um, to find out if his reality is physical or men- a mental construct, Mister Anderson, aka Neo, will have to choose to follow the White Rabbit once more. If he's learned anything, it's that choice, while an illusion, is still the only way out of or into the Matrix. Neo already knows what he has to do, but what he doesn't yet know is that the Matrix is stronger, more secure, and far more dangerous than ever before. Uh, the movie was directed by uh, just one of the Wachowskis, Lana Wachowski. Um, it stars Keanu Reeves as Neo and Thomas Anderson, Carrie Ann Moss as Tiffany, a.k.a. Trinity, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, second. Uh, um, which is listed as Morpheus and Agent Smith, which I have a question about that. Jonathan Groff as Smith, Jessica Henwick as Bugs, Neil Patrick Harris as the analyst. <laughs> or the <laughs> analyst. Um, That's a celebrity jeopardy. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, spoiler free, what did you think of this movie? It was okay, and I don't know, it was, it's kind of hard to put my finger on exactly what didn't feel quite right about it, but it's okay. It's not as good as anything in the, the first three. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I'll be honest, like, I've been thinking about this movie ever since we watched it, and I'm still kind of processing how I feel about it. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of really negative reviews of this movie online, and I don't quite agree with those because there's... I, I definitely didn't hate this movie. Um, I, I neither hate nor nor love it. I like you. I, I am definitely somewhere in between. I think there's definitely aspects of the movie that are intriguing, and others that I, I really was kind of confounded by and, and didn't really grasp. Um, I I will say, and we'll get into it once we start going into spoilers. I think just like with Seinfeld, I think they kind of yada 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 over the best part. Um, there, there's a certain part that they just kind of mention offhand, and I was kind of like, hmm, I think I would have rather known more about that. Um, and, and so far, I think this movie's doing pretty bad at the box office, so I'm like, I'm dubious if they'll ever make another one, which... Well, there, there was so many things, like, we, we went through a dry spell, and there's been a few things coming out, and I feel like maybe the competition at the box office... I mean, they're up against Spider-Man, which is doing really well. And uh, there was something else, isn't there? I mean, Sp- Spider-Man, I think that Sing 2 kids movie is out. Oh, so, I, I mean, there, there, was a big there are things. I mean, the fact that it was on HBO was all, all, always going to cut into its profit margin, sort of. Yeah, that makes sense. But even compared to other movies that have been released that way, apparently it's not doing too hot. Yeah. I would move your mic over just a little bit so you can talk closer into it. Um, yeah, um, I mean, let's get into it. Okay, so, yeah, spoiler-free impressions. I think we're both kind of yeah. okay on it. Okay Middle on of the it. road. Middle of the road. Um, so, yeah, let's get into spoiler territory. So, God, it, it this one's going to be a bit tough to review, I think. So the movie starts off, we're instantly um, introduced to the character of Bugs. And she um, actually, to even explain where this movie starts, I, I, I think I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. So basically, Neo is, is Keanu Reeves' character, who, of course... Um, and this is something I, I guess I, I should have mentioned in the spoiler-free things is, you know, a lot of people, the original trilogy, a lot of people lo- say they love the first movie, hate the sequels. Me and you both like the trilogy. Yeah, uh, I thought, yeah, the whole thing's good. Yeah, uh, and so we've never we've never been those people. We've always enjoyed the, the entire trilogy. Um, 
And the thing of it is, so Neo and Trinity both die at the end of the Matrix Revolutions in, in, in bringing peace between the machines and the humans. And as this movie starts, you know, and we saw this in the trailers, Keanu Reeves appears to be back in the Matrix, but this movie kind of starts off and it's like, well, is he really? And, and we all kind of know the answer to that. Um, but basically in this um, iteration, like he's a, a video game designer. Right. And they're basically saying that he he basically invented our program like the original Matrix trilogy, I guess, was a video game trilogy. Right. That, that so that whole storyline and the characters are stuff that he made, and that was essentially his product. Yeah. And so when they come into this, they say, okay, he's a video game designer. But like also, they try to develop that maybe he has mental issues. So you don't know if he has mental issues and thought that it was real or if he's in the matrix and like something else weird is going on. Yeah. So that that's, I, I guess that, yeah, that's good. That that's the way of explaining the mystery is like, well, maybe, maybe this isn't him in the matrix. Maybe, you maybe, know, he was crazy. He, maybe he is just a good crazy person. Yeah. Maybe he is legit crazy. Um, and, and the original trilogy was basically like in his head or whatever. Right. It's all game. And like, he's, yeah, whatever. Now, the reason I started here instead of the very beginning of the game or movie is because it's a little confusing because um, the character of Bugs pops into what you think is the Matrix, but it's actually um, the video game that he made, kind of. Right, like a simulation. Like, yeah, like, like a simulation even within the Matrix, basically. Um and so she appears in it, and she's basically watching the original scene from the original Matrix with with Trinity. Only because it's like a video game of it, it's it's a different actress than right. And you get a couple of these. Well, they they do it number numerous times, but like like if you see Trinity in the real world, she'll be a reflection of this other woman that was in the game. Or if you see Neo looks in the mirror, like his reflection is like this old guy who's supposed to look more like the person in the game. It, it, it's, it's, it's weird, but you kind of... I, I have a question about that when we get to it as well. Um, but yeah, anyway, so so Bugs appears in the video game and she's re-watching basically that scene. And so this also has, you know, the original Matrix had, you know, operators that were people in the real world who, who could basically talk to and help the people that were in the matrix right. as they're on their missions in this version, like the operator actually appears in the matrix, like the, the person in the matrix can see them visually. They're not actually there, but they can see them. Right. Like the matrix has been upgraded and like their ability to infiltrate is, has been changed. So they can, they can come in through different ways. They don't have to use a telephone anymore. Um, their, their operator can basically have an avatar inside there that they can see. Yeah. They actually tend to use mirrors instead of telephones. Mirrors. Yeah. Um, so basically bugs ends up, um, as she's in this simulation, um, like there's still agents in there and they kind of get to jump on her. Right. She gets pulled. Like, she's kind of, like, sideline watching through a wall or something, and she gets pulled through or something, so now she's in the simulation with Trinity and the agents. Yeah. But, like, uh, basically things start going off script. Like, Trinity gets captured instead of escaping by jumping through that tiny window or whatever. So it's playing out, but it's different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, it, yeah, exactly. It changes it a little bit from the what happened in the original movie. Um, now, this, I think I kind of understand this, but I'm not for sure. So, basically, I think what we find out is that you know, um, you know, Neo in his kind of mental state, subconsciously, like in the video game program. 
basically created a kind of Morpheus, like, but he's he's basically a mix between Smith and Morpheus, and he, I think. Is this what you got? I got the kind of his subconscious created that character to hopefully eventually wake him up. Right. Well, it sounds like he's he's been placed in. So if we go and just say, yeah, he's he's actually in the Matrix. OK, like like you probably expect, even though they're kind of playing it both ways. Right. So he's in the Matrix as a game programmer and the Matrix was his game. And like he's actually tried to escape this reality a couple times, and this comes out later. But so he's failed at escaping because of reasons we'll get into. But so he kind of like figures out this way to be a little more subtle and tricky. And the way he does this, he creates this like small program that runs alongside the old game, The Matrix. And the idea is that. The two components that were most fundamental in forming him as being this kind of like superhero were Morpheus and Agent Smith. And so he kind of meshes them together into this one character. And this character's developing inside the Matrix the video game. <laughs> right. And it's kind of like Inception. There's a Matrix within there's the Matrix. There's Matrix within the Matrix. Yeah. And like sub programs and weird stuff. But. So his idea is he needs to create another entity that can propel him to a high enough level that he can actually escape because he has failed at escaping more than once. Right. Yeah. So back to Bugs, she's in this simulation and she ends up fighting for, for her life from these agents. And this Morpheus Smith character kind of pulls her out and they do like their little sideline through a couple doors with keys and yeah she ends up in this this key shop which i'm imagining is kind of like a throwback to the the, the key, key maker yeah <laughs> in the second movie right and even though you don't see him you, yeah you see so many keys you, you just kind of assume that that's what the link is yeah but um yeah so he pulls her through a couple doors and they end up in like a simulation of Neo's original apartment. Right, Neo's original apartment and then she's like freaking out and yeah, he's not real. He's just a computer program. But I, he's guiding her or something. I I forget like well, okay, so she relays this story. Like uh, like she's the link between like Morpheus is kind of pulling her in so she can pull Neo out or something like she's a, like a link between the worlds, something like that. And, and they tell these stories. So she tells a story of before she was woken up out of the matrix, she was working as a window washer and this, I didn't quite get, So I think this must be not in the video game matrix, but in the real matrix. Right. And she's working as a window washer at the building where Neo works. And she sees a guy that's about to jump off the building, but he actually like, she, for some reason recognizes that it's Neo, but everyone else like, and maybe she did at the time views him as like an old bald guy. Right. Which is probably whatever iteration he was on was a different character, like a different look. And so this is one of his attempts to escape the matrix. Like he steps off and he doesn't fall and then it gets rebooted but somehow she then how did like because you well, she got pulled out at some point yeah i guess we never get that story right. apparently you, somebody you more, see that but probably like when she kind that of must have put the doubt in her reason. mind or whatever right so somewhere after that she got red pilled yeah got pulled out that, i mean we just have to assume that because it never goes into detail yeah. and then um the morpheus character now he's in the video game matrix he like takes a shower and like this the you know steam on the mirror ends up looking as it drizzles down looks like the matrix code and like he notices that and so that puts in his mind that oh something's off here yeah i kind of forgot like he didn't he must not have realized he was even a program i guess like he was a right he just was an agent and then when he noticed that it like planted that in his mind or whatever right because then he was free to act differently right like kind of the agent smith like he was kind of free from these the dictates of the system 
Yeah. And that's when he kind of went rogue and, and like found the Neo's original apartment and stuff like that. Like he's been doing stuff by himself. So after that opening, I think we kind of just go back or we go to Keanu's life kind of, right? Yeah, I think so. And we, yeah, we find out, like we said, he's this, this video game uh, developer, or at least in his mind he is. And his boss is this is this is another character that doesn't really make a lot of sense. I yeah. So basically, we can just see by his mannerisms and everything that he's Smith. Right. He's got some of the same words, and they even like flash cut the old Agent Smith. Yeah, and they do this a lot during the movie. Is they'll they'll flash to. Um, bits of the original trilogy. So, like, we could... It's not a mystery. We can see that this guy is meant to be Smith. Right. Which, why he would come in there, I don't exactly know. And then, like... I, I mean, they could have... They could have, like, brought in the same actor. Well, there was just a story that broke today that, like, Hugo Weaving was in talks to do it. Yeah. But somehow it just didn't work out. Yeah. Maybe he didn't want to touch it. <laughs> yeah, maybe he, read, maybe the he read the script and it wasn't good enough. <laughs> um, I will say, and we'll get to it, I think the best part of this movie is the part that takes place outside of the Matrix, but we'll get there. Um, so yeah, like, Smith is his boss, and they have this this whole conversation. Now, this conversation was got very meta and very weird, because basically they acknowledge that the Matrix is... Matrix is owned by Warner Brothers, like right, the games have, or whatever. Like apparently, yeah, the game is also Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers property in the in the. And they they have this meta conversation where they're like, they're like, they're gonna make a Matrix Four, and like if you don't do it, somebody's gonna do it. Yeah. So I mean, people have speculated that this uh, whole thing was like you know, real life. Lana Lana Wachowski kind of like you know, bashing Warner Brothers in, right. like, mirroring real life. But my thing is, is, like, if that's true, I mean, like, they approved this movie for release, so, like, they're allowing that criticism. Yeah, I mean, well, at the same time, you're still probably going to get better results with the original creators. But, yeah, possibly. I I, I mean, it's one of those things, like, it's a huge property. Someday it's going to be rebooted. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. Even if this movie does poorly, I think many, many years from now, we'll get some sort of continuation of the Matrix. Yeah, and what, I, I'd actually prefer like different storylines. But well, that's that's another thing that in like the original Matrixes where you had like they're like there have been like a thousand the ones. So I I mean you could go a lot of different ways with a hero's journey. Well, and actually when we get done with this review, I want to pitch you my version for Matrix Four. For just for funsies and see what you think. Because I've been thinking about it. Hmm. Um, Firehose diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see where my brain goes. <laughs> I just see diarrhea, hard shits, <laughs> elephant, <laughs> Jurassic Park. <laughs> That's like what <laughs> the dude who started looking like the Matrix code. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, um, so, yeah... Like, it kind of gives this this montage of, like, you know, the people um, that work with, with Neo, like, kind of, like, pitching ideas for the Matrix and kind of, the whole thing's kind of meant as, like, some sort of social commentary on, on like, I think, like, sequels and reboots and... and yeah, they go on about some of that different stuff and... Yeah, it's you can kind of tune it out. You're like, okay, I I get it. I kind of think like with that kind of stuff, either they should have leaned into it more, or maybe not at all. I don't. It was I, weird. I, I would say not at I, all. I would lean towards not at all. Um, but you know, maybe with that you know remark they made, like maybe this was like a she was she was pissed off that. Like they were told her that they were going to do a Matrix Four no matter what, you know. Maybe that is based on real life. I don't. I don't really know. 
yeah i mean i can definitely see some of that probably seeping in like that so i wouldn't be surprised um but basically we get this whole montage um and maybe before that uh i think i think before that we have um neo um like we find out that like he's had like a suicide attempt uh and, and like um he's been going to this therapist that's known as the analyst um played by uh, Doogie Hauser yeah. <laughs> and um like right away like I, I was wondering what you thought of this so he's wearing like these like bright like blue, blue glasses. glasses is that to represent like the blue pill and that he's like I, I, matrix. I'd say that's probably yeah, good. That was my guess, like the blue theme with yeah. him. Um, and 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 yeah, he's like his therapist, and he prescribes him p- the pills, which are the blue pills. Right. And we get this whole montage um, of him taking blue pills every morning. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and we can just see like like he's depressed, and like they even have this like it ends with him like like in the. Uh, bathtub was like a like a single tear like goes down oh, his right. face and yeah. he just it was kind of like an effective montage I guess um, at some point and I, I'm probably mixing up the order of things he go, he goes to this coffee shop with like his 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 friend from work right he has like it's like an assistant slash coworker or something and his name is Jude I think right like it's almost Judas. Ah, uh, I didn't even think about that. Right, but ah, uh, uh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, because he does betray him. Yeah, <laughs> and also like the original trilogy was filled with religious references, references. Yeah. and you know Neo was basically like a Christ-like figure. Right. Yeah, that's true. Uh yeah, uh, yeah. Kind of getting the order of things was weird, but okay. So they go to coffee. Him and uh, Jude. They go to coffee and Trinity shows up. Right. And Although like, Tiffany in this. Right. Her name's Tiffany. What's his name? Oh, he Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. Tom. Tom Anderson. Tom Anderson yeah. But um. Yeah, she shows up and like he keeps looking at her and it's kind of weird and like. He's definitely like attracted to her, you know. Yeah, he's attracted to her, and I guess. Uh, I guess it becomes obvious later why, but like Jude uh, tries to introduce them to each other. Yeah, because he's like, he obviously likes her, and Jude's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go, you know, talk to her for you." Yeah, and so at some point, yeah, they shake hands and they have. You can tell they have the magic touch or whatever. But we also find out that she's married with children. Right. So that that lasts basically just long enough for her husband and kids to come in and be like, oh, "Time to go, honey." Yeah, and. uh pretty much then she leaves like i don't know it's like kind of awkward and well, yeah um, yeah exactly it was supposed to be feel kind of awkward now this one this part got really weird um so there's it goes back he's in his building a fire alarm or something or was it it was at work. He was at work, and I don't remember if it's a fire alarm or if they say, like, a bomb threat was called in or what, but they're, like, evacuating the building. Right, yeah. I think it's just, like, a fire alarm. And then uh, he gets the phone calls. It's, like, the same plot point in the first movie. Yeah, it's, like, it's a text this time instead of a phone call. But, right. it, yeah, it basically says, you know, go into this bathroom or something. Right. And so he goes in there, and he's greeted by... Video game Morpheus, right? Who offers him a red pill? Um, and he starts like freaking out, right? Right, yeah, like because he's has serious doubts about his own mental well being. Yeah, so he's like thinking, like you're not real, like I'm having a mental break. Yeah, and then a guard comes in. Morpheus. But also, at some point, he stopped taking the blue pills, right? Like. So he maybe he thinks he's having accelerated. We do see him like dump him in the sink in the or sink, whatever. Right, yeah. So yeah, I guess he did stop taking him. A guard comes in. Morpheus does like the wall run shooting thing, you know, and then but then th- this bit got weird for me. So Neo um, exits. He's walking away. Like guards see him, and like 
they're about to shoot on. And then there's like a huge ex- like explosion. Um, Morpheus ends up getting in a firefight with those guards, and Major or Neo's just trying to like kind of keep his head down. But then Smith walks in and like becomes like Smith again, and like pulls his gun on Neo and starts like shooting at him. Yeah, and it was kind of weird because it was almost like he had a revelation as well. Yeah. Like, I remember this or something. I don't know. And then he just picks up a gun off the ground and starts shooting. Right. Basically, this whole sequence ends with him waking back up in the analyst's office. And, like, the analyst is, like, basically tell him he had an episode, like, you know, did you stop taking your pills or whatever? Yeah. But then my question is, what actually happened in that prior scene? Well, I think like all the fighting and shit was real, but it's just like, um, I guess Morpheus and Bugs must have got back out, and they just reset the building so it looks normal. So like he's like, if you go back there, what do you see? He's like nothing, because nothing happened. I don't know. Here's the other question I had for you about Smith. So the whole thing about you know. The the reason in the the Matrix Revolutions that Neo is able to basically make a bargain with the machines is that Smith is so virulent that he takes over the Matrix basically. Right. And like and so they cut a deal to, to destroy Smith. They cut a deal with Neo to destroy Smith. So if Smith was that powerful the first time, why in the fuck would they risk putting him in this version of the matrix yeah i mean it really it doesn't make any sense that either. part of it i don't think makes sense yeah and i really as as smith's character like intervenes in this movie the whole time i'm just thinking like i don't understand this character really. right why is he allowed to exist and then like and why does he do the things he different does and yeah it just doesn't they never, they never have a good explanation of why. That, yeah, that part is never satisfactorily explained. There's no, there's no explained. rationale for him being there. But yeah, and then like you have somebody else playing Smith, and you don't like him as a character. You like you're like you're not Smith. Uh, you like, like I, I had like an internal revolt. It's like I, I just didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, just that part it never made sense to me. Um, so now Matrix is, re- or Neo is really depressed. He's drinking. He's on top of the of a building, and he's about to to jump off because uh, once again, like he's like, I know something's wrong. I think I can fly. He's about right. to jump off, but that's when Bugs comes in, stops him, and she's like, "Follow me." Or basically, <laughs> right? She has the the white rabbit tattoo. Yeah, I was gonna mention that. That's another thing. That kind of bugged me in this movie is I feel like they were just playing all the hits. Like there's, yeah, so many references to the original trilogy, and uh, it just I don't know. It felt forced in, in 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 a way that I was like, we don't need these. Yeah, I, I think there's an element of that, and it takes away like you're not bringing anything original to the table. And and they meta talked about nostalgia elements as well that. Also, I'll I'll say one of my big criticisms of the movie is like the original trilogy, like the action in them was very groundbreaking. Right. This not only repeats a lot of the action we saw in those original movies, but it's not shot as well. Like the action in this movie just a lot straight of, up is not as good as in the original. A lot of people say that it looks slower and chunky, and I agree. Yeah. It's it's not as crisp. It's you know, yeah, and, the, and like you said, they repeat some sequences, so it's like the the same choreography in certain places. Ex- yeah, the exact same choreography. Yeah, like even to the where like when he fights Smith later on, like the walls breaking in the same way, and it just I'm like, why did they do this? Like, it's like why not in the spirit of the Matrix, like give us something fresh, try to give us something we've never seen before. Yeah, I I think that might have been part of the disappointment too. Because I, I, like in some of those fight scenes, you're not, you're not surprised. Like you're, no. you're just like, okay, this went how it was supposed to go. Yeah. So yeah, I I think there's definitely an element of that going on. Um. Yeah. So so but anyway, Bugs grabs him, goes through this white door. They end up on this um, bullet train in like Japan. Um. 
and and there he's kind of um the, and then even from there they go through another doorway that basically takes them to that room in the first one where he meets Morpheus and they red pill right. him and yeah and, she she finally red pills him like Morpheus failed to red pill him the first time right and there he he has a conversation both with bugs and the um new Morpheus and again in the background they're they're showing the same scenes of Neo in the first movie Right, yeah, just more needless reference. Like they say, like ha- it's a two and a half hour movie, and they say like half an hour is just old footage. And I mean, it's not all at once; it's spliced in in like you know ten seconds. Shots, right, but it's done a lot. It's done a lot, and I don't know if it was needed really. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was just there. It was just there, and I was just like, I don't know, weird choice, weird choices in this movie. Um, but yeah, they end up red pilling him at one point. Like he sticks his arm through a mirror, kind of like he did on the first one where it like starts dissolving into it. And at that point, the analyst is on the other side and like tries to pull him back in. And that's where we kind of really get the point that, oh, he's like definitely, definitely on the other side, on the other side. Yeah. Um, you, you pretty much expected, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then they end up going back to the bullet train and at this point, the Matrix um, does something that they'll do again, which is they have all these like plants um, within the Matrix that they can um, basically turn on to swarm the people in it. Right. Apparently, well, it seems like virtually like every person is uh, like a bot inside the Matrix. I, I was unsure if every person was or just a lot of people. A, a, a ton of them, right? Yeah. When, like... Later on, and there's a scene in the city where it seems like everybody is. <laughs> that part made me laugh. <laughs> there was some, yeah, it was like, it was a little stupid. <laughs> Although there's, I mean, we'll skip real close to that scene that, like, one of the guys, like, in bed with his girlfriend, and he gets turned into one of those, but, but his she, girlfriend she doesn't. doesn't. Yeah. So that's why I would kind of think that, maybe, oh, maybe, maybe not everybody. Maybe not everybody, but a lot of people, you know. Um. So, yeah, then they have this, like, kind of action scene you know on the train and again it's it's fine but it's nothing spectacular as far as you know action goes um now i can't remember do they go straight from there to him waking up in the real world i think they use there's like a small mirror in the bathroom they use to transport out i think i think that's right go out yeah yeah there's like this tiny mirror and like bugs is like we can't get through that. And um, he's like, oh, it's a matter of perspective. Get close to it or something. Right. It gets bigger as you get closer. And like, what? <laughs> <laughs> a little weird thing. <laughs> That's not exactly how perspective works. But uh, all right. Now, I heard that, like, um, I, I missed the line. But apparently someone says, like, at some point in the movie, um, Bugs says, what's up, Doc? So, like, she's kind of based. Her name comes from Bugs Bunny. Uh, I mean, I guess. Which is a Warner I, Brothers I, character. I, I, I don't remember that line, but... I have no idea what, like, the significance of that would be. <laughs> um, um, so Maybe something else happens, but he, he wakes back up, right, in the real right. world. A scene that very closely... Resembles the first. Resembles the first movie. Wake up in the jelly or whatever. Yeah, he wakes up in the jelly, takes, like, the thing out of his throat... Except in this version, like a a robot comes, and at first he, it's kind of weird because like it like gets on his like back or something, and kind of like smushes him into the thing, and I'm like, is this thing trying to drown him or something? Right. But then it like picks him up, and we find we find out that it's basically working for the good guys to carry him out of there. But as he's getting out of there, he notices like the the pod like um, right next to him is housing Trinity. Right, and and so. This comes back to not making a, a ton of sense because um, it it becomes apparent later on that he and Trinity are apparently like tantamount to this version of the Matrix working properly, and yet like neither of them are really guarded at all in this space. Yeah, like, yeah, we'll get to that later on, but that's another aspect of this movie that I'm still like, I don't really understand. Um, but yeah, anyway, they, they pull him out, they bring him to their, sh- their new ship, which I don't remember the name of the, 
ship. Uh, yeah, I don't I'm know. sure it had some sort of significance. <laughs> um, and, you know, he ends up dressing similar to how they dress in the original movies and everything. Um, I don't remember the exact sequence of events. I know at one point, like, they get him on the gurney and, like, he almost dies. Yeah, it's so many recycled plot points from the first one. It's like similar difficulties and... Um, I can't remember... They have a different reason, but... Is that where they put him in with Morpheus in the training program? Right, I think there's some... There's some, like, yeah, thing where he's having, like, the whatever problems and he gets introduced to the crew briefly and they're pretty much all forgettable and they're copies of... You know the first one. Yeah, you got the you got the operator. You got yeah, you got your woman with funny hair. Yeah, (laughs) kind of yeah, like you said, forgettable characters. But anyway, they're in there, and then at some point, yeah, he gets slapped back into a a training uh, mode with Morpheus. Right. And I guess this is where he's supposed to wake up and start training again. Like, I, I I kind of. Yeah, like he ends up like rediscovering that he knows Kung Fu and he beats Morpheus and, you know, wakes back up or whatever. And Well, well, part of this fight is like he gets it. He's getting his ass kicked pretty much. Yeah. And at some point Morpheus is like, or well, he doesn't want to fight even like, like he resists fighting. Yeah. And at some point Morpheus is just kicking his ass. He's like. If you don't fight, I'm going to kill you, and then, you know, you're never going to see Trinity again or something. So that's, like, his motivation. He find, oh, finds okay. his motivation to, oh, okay. to start fighting back. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember their dialogue, but you're right. It was something like yeah. that. Yeah, so, like, Trinity is, like, kind of his driving force. Right. Um, But anyway, they get back out, and then they end up going to, um, apparently, Zion is no more. Now they're... Uh, the city they go to is Io. Io, yeah. And this was actually ended up being kind of my, I think, favorite part of the movie and the, the part that we found out the most interesting stuff, although they kind of glossed over some stuff. So so we're interest, introduced to um, Jada Pinkett Smith's character, Niobe, from right, the Niobe's originals. There. She's like, you know, super old now. Um, that's another thing is like, Something like sixty years has passed. Right. So apparently he he's he's aged like twenty years or something, and supposedly like sixty years has passed in the real world. Right. Like him and Trinity haven't aged as much as them. Yeah. Um, apparently, due to being in the pods or something. I I don't know. They they're don't. Be, they're being kept artificially. Uh, yeah. They don't. They don't really say. They do mention something about them. Like their internal being maintained, I so, so somehow that I think the machines are kind of artificially like fixing them. Um, yeah. Um, but here we find out a couple of of interesting things. So basically, you know, the the third movie ended with peace between the machines. And um, the human race, right? And this, we'll get to this. This confuses me a lot. Well, because they don't go into enough detail. But basically, we find out that that piece did last for a certain amount of time. Right. So this is what's confusing. They made an entire new city because the Sentinels could find the other city, and somehow they've like um, camouflaged this new city. So it's invisible to the Sentinels. But also they have all these like machine creations that come from the machine world working and helping them do different things. Well, this is my understanding. Is that so they had peace for like, I think, quite a, quite a few years. And they also mentioned that uh, the original Morpheus became like the leader of the humans like during that time. Right, he was like, yeah, and he was leading he thought basically the prophecy was f- fulfilled and there would be everlasting peace. And so like when things started going wrong, it sounded like he didn't even really accept that or something. I don't think they even 
ever mention though, like if he died, how he. Well, I assume he he's dead. Died, yeah. I assume he's dead, but they didn't really mention how. Um, but basically, what we find out is there was a um, a split within the machines, where like some of the machines um, were with the humans, but some of them like with with their sentience or whatever, like basically started backtracking, and they they wanted to. Basically, some of them are against humans, some of them are with humans. And they had some sort of conflict that they briefly, like, show. But uh, this is the part they don't explain enough. So, basically, the, the machines that have aligned with the humans, you can see in, in this IO city. And, like, so, the, like, they have robots that work for alongside of them, they're friends with, they, you know... Right. Help them. They even make mention of like um, somehow like pulling data out of the matrix that is actively used in helping them in their uh, like b biology and like growing plants and different stuff. Yeah, and this is also something we glossed over is they, they now have this thing where like all these like tiny um, magnetic balls can take programs in the matrix and give them basically a physical form in the right. real world so this is how morpheus is yeah so they do that with morpheus the and then yeah like you're saying like um niobe takes them on a tour of io and they they can see that um they're working uh some of her people are working alongside like a program that's also like magnetic balls right, you know yeah. and yeah they're able to like uh, grow food they never did like they grow strawberries or whatever and they, they have all these you know projects they're working on um but yeah i i here's the thing i wish they would have explained is so so you know apparently there was this schism within the machines like i said and some of them um, wanted to maintain the peace with the humans and some of them didn't. The ones that didn't recreated the Matrix. But then I'm like, what happened? Did they kill and capture like a certain amount of people to refill the Matrix? Like, it doesn't go into detail. Well, I, I mean, I don't think everybody ever came out of the Matrix, but like they were going to allow people to come out. So, I, I mean, I don't think they lost a whole population. But I thought the end of the third movie. Well, they they they, they like because at the very end of the third movie, like the the Oracle and the Architect have a conversation, and she's like, "Will you uphold your um, end of the bargain and and free the all the minds of the people in the Matrix?" And he, he basically says yes. Right. So I thought all the minds in the Matrix were freed. Well, I mean, how many people though are gonna be like? I'd rather be here. Or I, I want to go live in a, a cave. So. I mean, some, but I feel like they should have mentioned that if that was the case, and they didn't. I mean, maybe. That's that's kind of my assumption, that the, even though there was peace, people still stayed in the Matrix, like a lot of people. That could be. Um, yeah. I, I kind of wish they... That, that This is the part where I'm like, oh, that's fascinating, but I wish you would have told me more, so I... I just had a better understanding of how we got to where we are. Right. And and so also not really talked about is some somewhere um the architect is transitioned out to this analyst character. Like so somehow he was deposed and this uh, this new guy came in. Right. And also like between the changes of the matrix certain programs were deleted like um the oracle presumably others yeah so i mean i guess that leaves a lot of questions that's probably like a whole story by itself because apparently the matrix has been rebooted more than once since then well and they also mention um the analyst does that the original architect you know he was very emotionless and and his version of the matrix was just mathematically based you know all about balance and everything and like he found that by um, utilizing emotion, um, he could power uh, or uh, basically make a version of the Matrix that was like uh, more stable and gave off more power. Right, and and like, so he goes into a speech about it later on. But the crux of him getting more power out of this 
is this relationship between Neo and Trinity. And this I didn't understand. Yeah, it doesn't make any fucking sense. But so he found out, like, if he keeps them in the Matrix close, but not too close, because if they get too close, then, you know, with their powers combined, they break the Matrix. Yeah. So, And it appears that they've done that a number of times. Right. Yeah, it, it sounds like they have broken through, but he kind of, the analyst has kind of figured out how to keep them close, but not too close. Right. Which, yeah, it, it, it yeah, that part it, of it didn't work. You're, you're not going to really make sense of it. But. No, that part of it didn't work for me at all. I, I was just like, this sounds like nonsense. And and like the idea that that would somehow like generate more power right. it, to the it, robots it creates uh, more power on the whole. It, yeah, it didn't, it didn't make sense to me. Yeah, but their love has this huge nuclear power apparently. Yeah, I mean. I mean, I like the idea of their bond and their love for each other freeing them from the Matrix. Like, kind of a love conquers all type of thing. Right. And I just didn't like that subplot, you know? Right. That, and I, I mean, it, it's tricky to tie all these things together, I'm sure. But yeah, it doesn't fit really well. But it also it comes back to, I think, the problem is like, you never. There is conflict, but at the same time, you're kind of like between sorting out what's bullshit and like you never really feel like he's in danger, I think. No. Yeah, no. He, he's never really, you never really feel that. Especially like once we get to the very end action sequence. Um, right, which is also, okay. I mean, I don't want to skip too far ahead, but. So we're out in the real world. There's Niobe, yeah, which it, I don't know about you. I hated her. You're just like, oh, um, she's a... I, I didn't hate her, but at the same time, I didn't necessarily, given how I found her to be in the original movies, I didn't know if she necessarily gelled, um, although a lot of time has passed, so maybe. The thing I thought was like weird, though, is so like she has this conversation with Neo, and... You know, Neo basically expresses his interest in freeing Trinity from the Matrix. Yeah. But apparently Niobe is afraid that that is going to just lead to all-out war between the humans and the machines. And so she's like, I'm going to have to imprison you. Right, which you don't really understand that either. No, I was like, I was like, what? That You're di- kind of jumping here, right? Yeah. But she's like, yeah. Well, it's nice that you got out and all, but uh, straight to prison. <laughs> yeah, so she puts him in this quote-unquote prison, which has a balcony to the outside. Oh, right. and, and all these ships that can just fly around out there. And apparently a port where, you know, the Morpheus ball guy can just, you know, ball version of Morpheus can come right in. Well, didn't he, like, he drizzled down a yeah, gutter like, or something? something like that. Yeah. And he's like, oh, she gave you the, the Rapunzel suite or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and but, then they're like, oh, this wasn't an obstacle at all, and they fly away. Yeah, and, and right after that, like, um, Niobe is next to like her wife or girlfriend or whatever, and she's like, and it, it, her wife is like, I bet a part of you is relieved that he escaped or whatever. <laughs> I'm like, this was the fastest turnaround ever. <laughs> it was so pointless to even. It, there was yeah, it was pointless. <laughs> I'm like, I I think they they basically I I, I think. Could have just had her express her opinion that she really didn't want him to do that or something. But I, I mean, I can see building the conflict. They got me to hate that bitch. And like, I, I didn't like her. You, you thought she was okay. But yeah, at the that same part time, of it, that they part just of walked it away sense. from it. Like almost immediately. It's like, we didn't need to go to the city. We didn't need to see it. We didn't need whatever the fuck that bullshit was. I, I mean, it's kind of cool and it's interesting and it's. Okay, but it really served very low purpose. It, we we got introduced to maybe a couple of machines there that were going to be part of the story. Yeah, and I also don't know exactly when it was. Well, I think it was somewhere around here. Um, we're introduced to, I believe her character's name was Sati, who is the little, the little Indian girl from uh, Matrix 3. Right, in the is train in, station. Yeah, in the train station is all grown up now. And, like, we found out that her um, father, who was a program, basically helped design the pod that Neo was in. Right. That's the story. So, like, he was tasked with designing these pods or whatever. So, he was part of that project. 
and like he figured out what was going on so he taught his daughter like or he positioned her or something so she was going to be like part of this element to help him escape I was a little confused by I don't remember the exact details but yeah she's she's helping formulate the plan to break Trinity out basically and did it seem like she kind of has Oracle powers or vibes? Like, wasn't she? Did, didn't she get taken to the Oracle or something? Yeah. So she she um, did have scenes with the Oracle because there was like the whole thing about um, them baking cookies or whatever. Right. Um, so yeah, she met the Oracle when she was little. Yeah. Well, I thought she was like one of the orphan kids that got took in and trained or something. Maybe I don't know. I don't really remember. I mean, she had a few scenes with the Oracle, but the, um, you know, not too long after that, S- Smith takes over the Oracle. But then at the end of the movie, like they have, she's with her at the very end of the movie as well. Right, she gets taken over too. Yeah, yeah. And then at the very end of the movie, the Oracle's back to being the Oracle, and she's with the little yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so yeah, it's it's hard to tell exactly. She she maybe did learn some stuff from the Oracle. Well, I assume she did. Right. It vaguely seemed like she had some kind of powers, but like it was, yeah, it was, it was, I don't know. I don't really, I'm not sure. Um. Anyway, so they're formulating this, this plan to get Trinity out. Now this, if they explained it, um, I totally didn't understand it. So basically they are going to take bugs and, um, Basically, her and Ball Morpheus is going to go into Machine City to Trinity's pod. And they open Trinity's pod, and they're going to, like, take her, the line that goes into their head, splice it, and put in, like, bugs. I didn't understand what the point of all that was. I I didn't get it. Right. It it really doesn't make sense, because don't they also have a team in the city, like... Trinity has to be she she has to be red pilled to come out one way or the other, but they're like, are they transferring her consciousness to bugs while they try to wake up the body and then they Trinity goes back in, and it happens very fast and again it's just another thing that seemed unnecessary. Yeah, part of me was like maybe I should have watched the movie with subtitles because I I totally just did not understand why they had to do that. Right, I think there was an explanation. I, I think there was some sort of thing where they thought, it, back, like, like Trinity nothing. maybe could have died if they didn't do it that way. But I didn't understand it myself upon one viewing. Right. Well, I, I don't really remember when they go back in. How do they approach Trinity? So he, Neo goes to the coffee shop where the analyst is waiting. Right. 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 And okay. Yeah. He makes this deal with the analyst, where like if he tells. Um, you know, talks to Trinity and she wants to stay in the matrix, then he'll like stay in, he'll blue pill and go back to normal. But if she says she wants to leave the matrix with him, like the analyst has to honor that. Right. And he let has to go. let her go and let them go. That's right. Yeah. So the analyst basically agrees to that. And also the coffee shop is filled with like, you know, the analysts like guys or whatever. Right. There's a bunch of, yeah. And Oh, and we glossed over it, but like, Back in the real world, like Niobe, like at first, like she's really mad at Bugs and like fires her as her captain or whatever. Oh, yeah. But then later on, like, um, I guess when she agrees to like help him or whatever, like she's looking for volunteers to help Neo go in, and basically all the other captains volunteer, You're right? Like, oh, my captain, my captain. <laughs> That's another thing that just was like. Oh, you're fired. Oh, you're rehired. Oh, you volunteer? You're not volunteering. I'm forcing you. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) It's the opposite of, you can't quit. (laughs) You're fired. (laughs) It's like that J. Jonah Jameson thing where like, you're fired. You're hired. (laughs) Um, Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So there's all these other guys that are on their side that also like enter the coffee shop as well. Um, So then Neo and Trinity have the conversation and at first, like she says, 
no because she loves her kids or whatever. Right, and the husband and the kids kind of come in, and it's it's like she's like, I can't do it. Right, but then like, doesn't she like? She looks back at Keanu and like, like the husband's like trying to get her to go, but then like, I think she has a change of mind right there. Right, she has like a change of heart, and then like the husband's eyes change, so you're like, oh, he's a bot, and I guess the kids too. Maybe I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. Um, but it seems like the analyst was full of shit, right? Like he wasn't gonna honor this deal. Right, yeah, no, I don't think so. Which is, I don't know, maybe that's why they had the backup plan with Trinity. Like, oh, actually, you know what? We totally, I totally we, forgot yeah, we a scene. The, uh, so, so there was a scene, Neil first goes in. Like and He's just going to extract her. Right, he goes to this motorcycle shop where she is, and he's basically ambushed by the analyst, who has the, the power to basically freeze time in the Matrix. Right, basically Neo's... Maybe there's a fight or something. Like, he's doing fine. He's doing his Matrix stuff. And then the analyst comes in and basically just stops time almost completely. Yeah. And he has this bot, like, basically take a shot at Trinity. And, like, the bullet's moving slowly. And, like, Keanu's, like, trying to get to it. But, you know, he's in, like, slow motion. And the analyst, this is basically where the analyst is kind of taunting him. And he tells us that story we already told you where, like, you know, he designed the Matrix that, this newer matrix around feelings and that the whole thing about, you know, keeping um, Trinity and Neo at arm's length and like their emotions power. Right. You get it, a, a bunch of exposition trying to explain all these things. That doesn't really make any fucking sense. Right. Oh God. And now I'm remembering, fuck, <laughs> we left out that whole scene. God, I don't remember how this all fits together, but at one point him and Bugs, um, Maybe it happened right before this scene. They go into the Matrix, and Smith um, confronts them, and all those other fighter guys with the French guy. Oh, yeah. The Merovingian. Which? This whole scene, I didn't understand. It was basically another fight. The Merovingian's in rags and screaming just a bunch of crazy shit at him. But here's the thing. So Smith shows up. And I don't remember their exact conversation, but at first I'm like thinking he's like proposing some sort of like team up between them, but then he like instantly turns on him. Well, I, I mean, they kind of team up for a minute until like everybody else's ass is kicked, right? No, not really, because basically Neo and Smith pair off and fight while, while Bugs and all the others fight. Okay. Because remember, they drop down into like what basically looks like the subway fight from the first one. Well, don't they? Yeah, they do go into that. At some point, I thought they got separated and Smith was kicking everybody's ass. Because he does say, yeah, something about her temporary alliance or something. Gosh, I don't remember. The whole S Smith character just puzzled me. I. I didn't understand why they would have let him back in the Matrix. I didn't understand his his motivation within the Matrix. It just none of it made sense to me. Like, whose side is he on? What's what's he trying to accomplish? Oh no, that comes okay. The part I'm talking about comes later. I think at the uh, the bar scene. So anyway, because just, Trump has to fight the analyst, or, or Smith has to fight the analyst. Uh, there is so that's that where that's where the uh, there is that part, but yeah, this scene basically perplexed me. So basically, yeah, Neo starts fighting with Smith. They go to, down into like this basement that that's reminiscent of the subway scene in the first one, and even like again, the action's not great, and it looks the copy moves out of the original. Right, it's a. Uh... I didn't. No surprises. The and action then they, wasn't as good, and it was the same. Yeah, and then even the action with like bugs and the other people didn't look very good. Yeah, it wasn't crisp. Yeah. And I didn't have subtitles on, so I really didn't understand what the fuck the Merovingian was saying. Except I, now he's like looks like a homeless man right. instead of like a posh. Basically, he Frenchman. was just pissed that he wasn't rich and uh, you know have fashion and a nice life anymore. Yeah, something <laughs> along those lines. It was I don't know. It was puzzling. Okay. <laughs> so now that we got all that out of the way, let's go back to where we were. So end of the movie, they're in the coffee shop. And again, um, Trinity comes back and decide, you know, wants out or whatever. Yeah. But instantly everybody gets into the fight because the analyst wasn't going for that. 
and everybody's in this big fight, but then he uses his Matrix slowdown powers again. Right, so basically everything stops. But then, out of nowhere, Smith, and for some reason, Smith is immune to this power. Well, right, either immune or, like, he can do the same thing, which he never did at any other time. But, yeah, he just walks in like it's no thing and, like... And if he could do it at a other time, he could have totally kicked Neo's ass before. Right. So just, I don't think he him. has that power. But... He's just not affected? I guess, but do they explain that? And, again, what's his motivation here? Uh, I mean, I guess he wants to... It, it doesn't seem like he's aligned with Neo or the analyst. Right. He might just be in it for himself. He always was like a selfish character, I guess. So I, 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 that's the only thing I can surmise is that he's trying to take over the Matrix himself again. It could be. I guess that's his purpose. But yeah, you, you never really... It never feels great. They never... I mean, again, maybe if I watch this movie again with subtitles on, maybe it'll make more sense to me. And again, it sounds like we're just hating on this movie. Like, some of it did intrigue me. Right. We thought it was okay. I mean, it's still got a lot going on. It's just... Also... There, there's so many things that are confusing and, and just they don't feel, like, clean, I guess. Also, I should mention, in the the conversation before, where, like, um, not not in the coffee shop scene, but in the motorcycle shop scene where he had time slowed down and he was you know, ranting about everything. He explains that after Neo and Trin uh, Trinity died in the third Matrix movie, um, he um, and the machines put them back together, basically. Right. They were, yeah, they were revived and fixed up. And I think he even mentions, like, this takes a big toll on the machines to do this. Right. It, and however you want to say it, there was some, like, a large cost. Right, right. Um. I have mixed feelings about this because, because like I said, I actually liked the Matrix, the original Matrix trilogy, and this kind of minimizes their sacrifice in that third movie with them just, you know, being brought back to life. Right. And I would maybe be okay with it if they made more Matrix movies that were good and actually justified them doing that. Well, yeah, if anything's good, you're going to... But if this it. ends up being the last Matrix movie, it really does kind of cut the nuts off the third movie, which I don't like. Yeah. I mean, you can always just be like, pretend they don't exist. Or or you could... Like kind Star Wars prequels. Yeah. Or you could kind of <laughs> argue that, you know, they brought them back, but maybe slightly different versions of them. <laughs> Who knows? Um, they could... Yeah, they could have just cloned them. They could have just said they cloned him. Right. Well, he didn't. I mean, I wouldn't think he would have sustained too much damage in his little brain fight at the end of the third one. Like his whole body and his whole brain and his whole, you know, neural network is still there. <laughs> and it just, I guess, it depends how you know soon they got to Trinity. I mean, she was like gutted through the middle with right. Her. She had like rebar. Through yeah. Her and, like she was all fucked up. <laughs> like that. That was a patch job. <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah, you just give him oxygen and like, uh, a few pumps. So yeah, I don't know if I really liked him doing it, uh, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, like you said, I can just ignore this movie if they never make other ones. Right. Um, okay. So yeah, for some reason, Smith, um, isn't susceptible to those effects. So he starts fighting with the analyst and time, you know, goes back to normal. Um, this I thought was weird. So Smith ends up, he has some sort of gun that he shoots the analyst with and just basically makes him like disappear. Right. Yeah. It blows like huge chunks out of him. But obviously it doesn't kill him because he just comes back later at the end of the movie. Yeah. So it's like, where did he find that gun? Where did he get those guns? <laughs> it just, I, when you introduce something like that, it's like, it just brings up more questions. So in this confusion, like, uh, Neo and Trinity are fighting to get back together, and there's like all these people in between them. Yeah. So basically, you know, all the Matrix goons and all the people they brought them are in this big brouhaha. Um, eventually, they end up going outside and running away because, like, there's all these other people on the streets that are swarming them. Right. This must have been like, 
like right when the uh, time went back to normal, they they use their powers and they get out. They get out of there. And, yeah. uh, they jump on a motorbike. Yeah. Oh, and we didn't mention like earlier. Trinity mentioned that she had like some dream where she saw um, them on the motorcycle and like things went poorly. Right. It, basically, everything played out and uh, yeah, it ended badly or something. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, there's this uh, action scene where um they're being chased well well kind of before it gets to that like he's still been stopping bullets and shit with his shield or whatnot right and so they get outside and they're like oh can you fly us out of here and he kind of does this little like mario jump in the air comes back down he's like i guess i can't fly yeah he's like that's not gonna work or something (laughs) that's when they get on the bike (laughs) (laughs) which i mean yeah that that also doesn't make sense because like his mind is free again you would think that would if if the kung fu came back to him, you would think that would come back yeah. to him. But uh, and they use this again later. But uh, apparently, he doesn't have this power anymore. But basically, talking about how you never feel like he's in danger. Basically, from this point on, anytime he's in danger, he's just going to use that force field power, and 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 the yeah. sound is a pound. Yeah, basically through the whole thing, he's like. He's using the shield on cars. He's using it on people. He's using it for bullets and yeah. missiles. And basically, that's his his gimmick. Like he uses the shield for everything. Yeah, you see him like pushing, um, uh, you know, the swarm people away. I think he uses it at one point to like crush the top of a car so they can use it as a ramp. Yeah. No, no groundbreaking action here. Some of the other people like are in like a jeep or something, and they're they're like using guns, and and they're eventually get swarmed. But then, like, um, Bugs and Morpheus and a few others are uh, able to... They, they finish their mission in the real world, so now they're in. And they basically just kill all the people swarming them and, like, instantly save them as well. Right, like, they're... they're well, uh, yeah, they fly away on the bike, and they're, they're getting attacked by helicopters and cars and all this shit, and the, the swarms get turned on or whatever. Yeah. And this is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, but, like, this part made me laugh. You'd almost say, like like, the other group, like... The bugs and the morphies and all those like sub agents, like none of those guys were going to survive the bots. Like I, I can't see them surviving that onslaught. But like Matrix and Trinity, they're flying down the road, and like there's all these bots in these skyscrapers and stuff, and they're jumping through the windows and coming down at them. And like I, I guess he's shielding some of them or whatever. Yeah, it's like we're and, making human bombs out of them. Right, but like most of them are just like splatting like <laughs> raindrops on the pavement yeah. and you're like god well that's uh i guess it would be should have been a better aim i guess well and the one thing is like so like the, the chances of those people like actually just like hitting them are are nil but like well, there's so many you think maybe someone would but have. you would think like if enough of them are splatting in front they'd at least like create like bumps right, or little, sm- uh, smears <laughs> it'd be funny if they just like slipped in all the blood and right. guts <laughs> 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 but yeah, it was so. I don't know. We were both laughing because it was just stupid. It was so. Yeah, it was just so ridiculous. You can't help but laugh because yeah, that part it was just. <laughs> I don't insane. even remember how that sequence ends. But well, basically they get. Oh well, all the bots kind of herd them into this alley or basically I, I a think, side street or something. Well, I think eventually they do like wreck the bike or something. Right, that's part of and it. And they end up having to escape in this elevator up to the top of a building. Well, right, they get in the side road. Basically, they got helicopters on both sides and all this bullshit and like they lose the bike and then they go in and there aren't any bots here conveniently to fight, so they just wait for the elevator. They go up to the top and then um do they fight a helicopter again up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The helicopters come, and and one of them launches a missile. He just uses his force field power, blows up the other one, and I think maybe they do something to take that one down, and then they have a moment together, and then eventually another one comes that forces them to jump off the building holding hands. Which I don't know why that would be exactly, but yeah, they they get to a point where they decide they're going to... Both jump off the building. That's true. Why did they jump? Because his force field powers would have still worked. Right. Like, they weren't really in danger, but maybe they're just like, ah, time to test if we can fly. I guess, I mean, they're like, well, we we, we can defeat these guys all day long. What else are we going to do? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so they jump off, and they're doing the leap, a whole leap of faith thing. Right. 
And so they're falling, they're falling, they're falling, and then finally they stop falling. And basically it's Trinity is holding him up. Yeah, so she's flying. She's flying, and he, he he's not. And there was some other like speech somewhere along the line where um, about him not being the one, and like he never believed it, and she believed it. And then, so when she catches him and she's holding there midair, they're, they're kind of playing like the... Um, the little hero music, like maybe she's the one. Yeah, like I don't. That's how kind of how I read that. Like I didn't know exactly how they were going for that because you know, basically in. But other, I mean, other than like at the very end, she really didn't play much in the movie. Like she didn't have like a huge part. Not a huge part. But my thing is like, in like the original trilogy, like the the people who are free from the Matrix. You know, their mind were free, was free. They could all manipulate the Matrix to a certain extent, but I always took it as that like Neil was the one because for whatever reason, it was almost like you know in Star Wars, like there's these people that are force sensitive, but for whatever reason, there's some that are more than others. Right, like his neural. Yeah, his, for whatever reason, right. his neural pathways like really allowed or him off to man- the charts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he had the most bitty chlorians. Yeah, um, <laughs> and. Um, so that's what I thought made him the one. And obviously Trinity could manipulate the matrix to a certain extent, but like, not like he could. Right. So like, I don't really understand this whole like flip flopping of, Oh, maybe she's the one he's not. I don't really. I think it was probably more political. Uh, I don't know. I mean, she was a badass character in the, Original, right, so she yeah. didn't need to be able to fly to be a badass. But I, I mean, I'm okay with it if they're just like, oh, like, like maybe, you know, other people are as strong as him, and they just, you know, yeah. just I don't know. unlock that. But yeah, the she can fly and he can. I don't know. It, eventually, he can again at the very end of the movie. I think basically he couldn't fly, so they could have that scene. I guess so, yeah. The power of love <laughs> compels them. Right, yeah. Um, now, I remember, you know, the very end of the movie, but bef- before they, like, uh, was there anything before they um, go to the analyst again? I, I mean, there was that, like, we talked about briefly, somehow there was that bullshit scene where they actually extracted Trinity. Um and and took her out. Oh yeah, the, I don't know if we really need to hit on that. They get her in the real world. Yeah, I mean at the coffee shop, that's where they did the whole like bugs thing, taking over her body for a quick hot second. But again, like I can't explain it. I don't know why they had to do that. Was there something that happened to Smith after he blew away the analyst? That's a good question. I don't think they ever go back to Smith. I don't think they ever. Yeah, I don't remember them going back. It's a dangling thread they'll probably never get to. Um, I mean, I'm I'm sure there was probably some scene with bugs in them. I just don't remember. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, end of the movie, they go back into the Matrix. They confront the analyst. And like, um, Trinity like uh, beats the shit out of him, basically, like, you know, for manipulating her with the kids and everything. Right. And she like fucks up his jaw once and she does other things to him like you know just physically assaults yeah. him um ah, what else like eventually they you know they both fly off but do, do was there anything more significant in that scene with him uh i mean there was definitely some kind of negotiation where they're like they were negotiating they offered him like either do this or this and and basically I don't remember the exa- the wording or even the details, but like, basically, they showed that they had the the upper hand and and that they were going to take it, and this guy was just going to have to fucking deal with it. Yeah, I mean, it it ended very similar to the, you know, the first movie. You know, he's in the on the payphone or whatever, basically, you know, putting them on notice or whatever, right. and then he flies off. This was a kind of a similar thing where they basically put him on notice, and then they 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 both fly off, and then uh, they cut to a um, 
a cover of the same song that's not as good, which right. which is fitting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, again, um, so yeah, overall, like, like, I know it sounds like we were pretty harsh on this movie and, and uh, as you can tell, like, there's definitely some things in the movie that didn't make sense. Um, the action was not great. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, I, the part of the movie I liked the best was the stuff in the real world where, you know, they were talking about, you know, kind of the, the peace and, and the, uh, some of the machines breaking off and, and all that stuff. But I, I just kind of wish they would have got into more more detail to, you know, find out how we got to where we are, you know. Yeah, and you see this a lot in, in trilogies and in certain uh, genres and stuff where a huge number of the plot points just get recycled and you get that kind of nostalgia for it. But I, I, I always kind of feel like I wish they'd just given me a, a different story. I agree. I agree. Um, do you have anything else to add before we score this movie? Not really. I, I mean, I'm kind of like you, you. I feel like we have just been shitting on it for like the whole time. But when it ended, we were both like, it was okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, Again, like I, I feel like I'm still kind of processing it a little bit, <laughs> right? But, and I think like talking it out, like we realize more of the problems. Yeah, like we it was just kind of unsettling. Like I knew it wasn't great, and like I, it, at the same time, you kind of it's hard to put your finger on what was wrong exactly. Yeah, like it's definitely the the least good Matrix movie. Like the trilogy is much much better than this movie. Um, but at the same time, like there are interesting ideas in this movie. Um, and you know, if this movie wasn't doing so poorly at the box office and they had a chance to continue, I I think they could actually, with more time, make something out of what they laid down here. Um, I just don't think it'll ever happen. Yeah, I really don't know. And like you said... Maybe it would be better to tell a totally different story within the universe anyways. I, I mean, I think to some extent we've seen that with like Star Wars and sometimes the side stories are amazing. Yeah. And sometimes it's better to just say, we have this intellectual space, let's go do something else here. Yeah. And I, that's where that's the direction I'd go with it. All right. Well... Score time, what would you give this thing? Scale of 1 to 10. I mean, I'm middle of the road. I'm like a 5 or a 6. Yeah, I'm going to be nice and give it a 6.5. Um, but yeah, it, it is definitely middle of the road. I mean, um, I, I think I think it is worth seeing, especially if you're a fan of the original Matrix movies. I mean, apparently a lot of people are really hating it. I think, I think even if you end up not liking it, you you'll find some things that intrigue you. Yeah, like you said, it's not all bad. There's some good ideas in there. It's just it didn't all come together. Okay, so now that we've reviewed the movie, are you, now I haven't thought this out. Like it's not like a full like thought out pitch, but it's got the bones there. Are you ready to hear my pitch for Matrix Four? As ready as I'm gonna be. Okay, so forget everything we just talked about. Forget about your intro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> clean slate time all right okay matrix four we open on zion it's nobody it's empty it's all broken to shit right yeah i'd say that's probably fair okay now of course zion is underground right yeah so we start we start going up 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 we go all the way to the surface, we're in New Zion, the year, I'm going to say 2036 AN after Neo, right? Because, it, no, think of it, in this universe, he basically is a Christ-like figure okay. that saved the world, right? Yes. And 
so in this world, the peace between the machines and the humans still exists. And in New Zion, and also remember in the um, original movies, the war between the humans and the machines basically like scorched the skies, they say. Right, yeah. It, it fucked up the world. Everywhere. Well, enough time has passed, and basically the work between the machines and the humans, the skies are good now, right? The, okay. the world's better. And you can see in like the architecture, the buildings and stuff, basically um, – uh, th- there's a mishmash between the machines. Like, you can see the machines' influence in, like, the architecture and stuff. Like, the humans and the machines are coexisting. Okay. And there's there's robotic humanoid-looking things. There's still, like, you know, sentinel-type things in the skies. But, like, you know, there's not that kind of conflict. Now, in the world, like, you see, like, statues... Uh, of Neo, he's he like I said, he's a Christ-like figure, and there there are basically like religions brought up around him and things, people worshiping him and shit like this. Now, the way I see it is since you know the Matrix caused such, the Matrix is basically like a symbol for um, slavery. Basically, it enslaved people. So in this world, the government has made going into any sort of matrix illegal, hmm. right? But there's people who do it illegally because either th- like playing a video game or whatever, they just like enjoy going to other worlds. Um, there are some machines that do this because they do like the, you know, illegal energy from the humans still, that sort of thing. So like, like there's these... Yeah, there's these groups that basically. So there's like some like overweight machine in his mom's basement, like bit mining these people, <laughs> something like that. Okay. okay. There, basically, there's an illegal illegal matrices activity going on, yeah, right? Okay. Um, but at the same time, there's police that are basically agents, and their job is to, you know, basically. Because the people that are in these matrix still, they can't just be unplugged, right? So they have to have somebody go in and safely remove them so then they can be arrested or whatever. So basically there's these agents, you know, cops that are designed to go into the matrix and and get the people that are in there illegal out, okay? Who's paying for these cops? Uh, the government. There's, you know, there's a government. Fuck the government. <laughs> <laughs> And basically, now this is the part I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little fuzzy on, but I think one of these cops is basically going to discover the wonder of the Matrix. And what I like is, so the idea in the original movies is the Matrix was designed to basically keep people down. But I like the idea of this movie exploring the Matrix as a good thing, as as something that can like a video game, free people from the doldrums of life, you know, the real world, you know? So it's like the Matrix in the first trilogy is kind of the enemy, where in this movie, may, you know, uh, maybe a sign of something good. And and you can run around just shooting bots. Well, I, and, and what I think is at some point in the story, I don't know how this would exactly come about, but this is how you get your Keanu Reeves um in there so he's still dead i i wouldn't undo his death but he would basically pop up in this cop's adventure and he would basically be like um russell crowe's uh zorel in man of steel where like it, it, it's basically his digital consciousness so like it, it replies to situations as kind of he would have you know you know what i mean mm. So he's like, he's not alive. He's a, just a, a digital kind of representative of what he was. Stay righteous, dude. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, those are the, like, I, again, like, uh, I don't know, like, exactly where the story would go, but that would kind of be the broad strokes of it. What do you think? Lay a lot on here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess I could go a lot of ways. Hmm. Are there aspects of it you like? Well, like turning on its head, I think, is a good idea where you're just having, um, 
Or instead of like being the norm, it's like a. Uh, it's more, it's more, I don't know, something to be looked down on, I guess. Right. Although I never really felt like they were getting out of the matrix, like we talked about. Like you thought everybody was getting out, and I was kind of like thinking everybody, like some uh, people would stay in. Well, you. Know, it's funny because, yeah, with the Oracle and the Architects conversation, you know, my thinking was that everybody was going to be let loose. But at the same time, even if they did that, like you were saying, I imagine there would be a lot of people that were like, you know, that Cypher guy in the first movie that would be like, oh, this kind of fucking sucks. I think I'd rather go in the Matrix where steak tastes good and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's another thing. Like, if it was free and you could do whatever, then like... Well, they also talked like in the Matrix about like we created it to be a perfect world and and like everybody just died off because they weren't happy or something. But you know the other thing of it is is like if you knew like once your mind is free that if you go back in the Matrix that you can like fuck with it in really fun ways like they do, like hell yeah you'd want to go back in there. Yeah, I mean that sounds much better than going out and fucking eating fucking uh cream of weed every day but you can also see like you know how like neil <laughs> jerking off to like the one bald chick in the room but i can totally see like a bunch of like neo like religious like cultists like you know wanting to ban the matrix and thinking it's an ultimate evil you know yeah i mean religion is capable of pretty much anything but yeah i think uh i could see that but uh yeah, that was just my two cents. I, sometimes I, I, my brain goes off on things like this. <laughs> I, I really need to start writing again. <laughs> I've been thinking about writing. Like I've sat down and written before, and it's, it's so it's so hard. And that's another thing is like, it's so easy to criticize and pull shit apart, but like to actually try to put all that it's hard. elements together is is ridiculous. The, the, the old blank page thing, man. It's true. It's it's tough. The fact that they did such an amazing job on the first 3 is pretty unbelievable. There's so much going on. So, yeah. I really like hopefully hopefully COVID goes down and like they do the Comic-Con here again next year because i really want to go to that and just like well i saw people dressed up and the thing is i'm not sure because i i think there's like kind of a half-ass comic-con and like a real comic-con but there's also like an anime comic-con i don't need to go to that one. yeah i don't i don't know i'm not big in that either but no but i'd be interested in just going to like an artist alley and like kind of seeing what people charge because like i i have some comic strips uh, scripts that are complete and like they're who knows they're probably dog shit but like uh, I like them I just like it's expensive to to pay for an artist you know yeah yeah I'd like to do it though I really would yeah you're probably looking over 100 bucks a page for someone decent yeah yeah it's so. bendy um god <laughs> we had another long episode um yeah, we're like at an hour forty three minutes. Jeez, man. <laughs> um, but this was a fun discussion. I'm, I'm, um, this was a really intriguing movie, and and uh, it was fun to talk about. So I, I, I enjoyed this conversation. Um, but should we, should we wrap this bad boy up? Yeah, I got something brewing. <laughs> this episode seventy five, kind of a monumental episode, as we make our way to number one hundred. Um, anyway. Guys, everyone who, who listened uh, to this, thank you very much. Please comment in the YouTube uh, on on YouTube and let us know what you thought of the Matrix. Like, um, let us know what you thought about my <laughs> shitty Matrix pitch. Um, uh, give well wishes to AJ <laughs> and um, um, you know all all the stuff. Subscribe both to the YouTube channel and the podcast feed. Um, please do that. Um, please interact with us on Twitter. Where can people find you on Twitter? At unsolicited S U G. And you can find me at Zach Jones Live. That's Z A C H J O N E 
Jeez. Z A C H J O N E S L I V E. I've learned that spelling spell. since like kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that is going to do it for all of our shenanigans and poppycock this week. Please, please, please tune in again next week. Bye, guys. See ya. Have a good one. Have a good one. <laughs>